so we're fly fishing with our friend John Graham again. And you want to tell everybody where we're at, John? Yeah, we're on the Vermilion River in central Illinois. Okay. And we're doing a little bit of fly fishing for smallmouth today. And uh, we're uh, working basically uh, some subsurface minnow imitators, um, such as uh, Josh over there is using a clouser minnow. That's a clouser. Okay. And we're also throwing some topwater flies. Uh, Sherry here has a, uh, a diving frog that floats, but when you strip your fly line, it dives under the water and pops back up. Okay, There's a, just a ton of different types of top waters and streamers you can use. Um, little foam poppers can be real good. And you can even use real flashy streamers like this here, real flashy. Now, is there something specific for smallmouth that you like to use, or one of your favorites? Probably my favorite, my favorite fly for top for smallmouth is the blockhead popper. And that makes a pretty good pop. Very I mean, loud pop. You wouldn't and it's think not, so. Not a very big fly. It's of course not heavy. It's easily casted on a fly rod. Um, but sometimes when the fish are really aggressive, you can even go as big. You can start using some bigger flies, like this. Much bigger. Much bigger hit much bigger head in the front, pushes a little more water. And then of course you can't, you really can't talk about smallmouth fly fishing without talking about some uh, crayfish imitators too. Yeah, those uh, are a... Bottom, that go on the bottom, a little crayfish imitator. Those are pretty hot. Yep. We aren't really fishing on the bottom right now, um, mainly because the river's really low right now. And if we fished on the bottom, we'd be getting hung up a lot in the rocks. Um, so what kind of spots, so we're out uh, on the low river like this, what are we looking for to hit the, the honey spots for fly fishing? Well, when the river's this low, which is, you know, historically, it's about as low as it's been in, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, we're looking for depth, shade, and if we can get some current going through those spots, it makes them even better. Uh, but basically, you know, decent depth, you know, bottom, you know, they like to have rocks in there, mm -hmm. but usually rocks are not a problem. Josh has got a fish. So that's cool. Josh can actually show you what we're going and for. And you're here. using that clouser, right? He's using a clouser minnow. He's stripping it pretty fast, making it look like an injured minnow. Hey, this one's got a little fight in him. Yeah, he does. Josh is actually using a frosty clouser. I believe the name ought to be Frosty Glovinsky clouser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that fish does have a lot of fight in him. Yeah, this might be a 10 incher. Yeah, we're trying to get some bigger fish. Josh is on the big fish hunt. I got him sideways. Oh, that's why he was so fighting so well. Yeah. You got him right on the side. Yeah. Come back here. He went after it. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, you didn't snag. He went after it. Yep. Now, when you're looking to start fly fishing, uh, when it comes to rod selection, that you're going to want to buy a rod that's your best... Your best bet is to get a, a six, a seven, or an eight weight. One of those weights will be fine. If you had to pick one, I would get a seven weight. Um, from all the fly fishing I've done, I think seven weight is just about the perfect weight if you're only going to buy one. Um, when it comes to reels, you don't need a very expensive reel for smallmouth. Your reel is basically just going to hold the fly line. Um, you can spend as much as you want on a reel. I mean, you can spend $400 on a reel if you want. But yeah, for for the, those who are a little bit more experienced with fly fishing, um, do you have a, a certain recommendation like what you use here? Yeah, um, if you're a little more experienced and you want to step up, uh, the Sage Corporation makes some fabulous, fabulous rods. Um, this is a Sage smallmouth rod, uh, which is designed for throwing big, bigger smallmouth type streamers and bugs and topwaters. Um, Sage makes a lot of good rods. Uh, Sage and Reddington, which uh, Josh has a Reddington rod. They're, Reddington is a very good company because they make a lot of different uh, price points. They have rods for $80 and they have rods for $300. And there's a lot in between. So, you know, they're a good price point too. Okay. Well, then I guess my last question would be, is all fly line created equal? No, definitely not. Types I'm here. glad you mentioned that. When it comes to buying fly gear, you want to put your money in the rod and the line. Okay, like I said, the reel's not that important, but the fly line is. Buy as expensive a fly line as you can afford, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. You'll be happy you did. Mm -hmm. Cheap fly line makes fly fishing a lot harder. Fly casting a lot harder. Tangle doesn't go It where doesn't it... cast as well. It doesn't have a lot of the nice coatings that help it float on the water. There's a lot of scientific stuff that I don't know about, but buy as expensive as you can afford. Um, the lines that we're using right now, 
are, you know, retail around $70. I wouldn't spend anything less than 50 for the line. Yeah. Nothing less than 50. You and want a weight forward. That's the kind of line you want. A weight forward floating fly line. And you have some special line over here, is that correct, for yeah. specifically for smallmouth? Yeah, this is called a, uh, the smallmouth fly line. It's made by Rio. Uh, all the lines that we're using are made by the Rio company, R-I-O. They're a big fly line company. And this line's called the smallmouth line. It came out about a year ago. And it is a fabulous line. Fabulous. It's, 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 it's a warm water line. It casts well. It's just a fabulous line. Thanks, John. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's just a, that's just a range. Okay. Now, so we got the back cast. We got the back cast taken care of. Now, when you go to cast, most people when they're starting out, including me, here's what they do: they go forward and they drop their rod down. See, how I yeah. drop the rod down. Yep. You don't want to do that. Okay, you don't want to follow through. What you want to do is you're going to do what's called an accelerated stop. Okay, so you're here, you're watching. Okay, watch my stop. Stop. Okay. Here, that line goes yep. right out because I stopped here. I didn't stop down here. Right. If you can do those two things, you're going to be in business. Right. And you have super awesome fly line on here. You can already hear it shooting. Mm -hmm. You're making that noise when you're shooting through the right. guides. Okay. And like I said, accelerate, stop, up high. <coughs> and if you stop high like that, the line goes super right out and you get a gas.